Welcome to Draw Studio. Today we're going to learn the properties of ellipses in perspective. Let's get started. We can perceive an ellipse as a flat, two-dimensional oval. If we divide it in half by two lines going through the widest points of the ellipse, the longer of these lines is the major axis, and the smaller of these lines is the minor axis. Notice that the major and minor axis cross the center of the ellipse and are right angles to each other. Also notice that the major and minor axis divides the ellipse into four equal sections. These principles will be true of any ellipse, no matter its size or orientation. The major and minor axis go through the widest parts of the ellipse, they are right angles to each other, and they divide the ellipse into four equal quadrants. We call the size of the ellipse its degree. A perfect circle is considered 90 degrees, so an ellipse would be anything less than 90 degrees, down to a straight line at 0 degrees. However, we can also perceive an ellipse as a circle that has been tipped in space. When we perceive the ellipse as a circle in perspective, some strange things happen. Remember the ellipse perceived as a flat shape had the major and minor axis crossing in the center of the ellipse, creating equal quadrants. If we put a rectangle around the flat shape, the major and minor axis would also divide the rectangle in half, creating four equal sections. However, if we put a rectangle around the circle in perspective, it would have to converge to a vanishing point because it exists in space. If we find the center of this box using the X trick going from corner to corner, we would see that the center of the box is offset in perspective. This means there is more space on the half closest to us and less on the back half. This also means that the center of the circle in perspective is offset, and not the even mathematical center. If we draw in the major axis going through the widest points of the ellipse, we will see a sort of major axis paradox. The major axis cuts the ellipse into equal halves, but the center in perspective is offset due to the principle of convergence. The major axis is not the same as the center of the circle in perspective. To be clear, these are both true ellipses. We are just shifting our perception of them from two dimensions to three dimensions. Whether we perceive the ellipse as a flat shape or a circle in perspective, they're both ellipses. We can create the minor axis by drawing a right angle to the major axis, going through the widest points of the short side. This will divide the ellipse into four equal quadrants. In this example, the minor axis lines up with the vanishing point. This is because the ellipse is horizontal and centered on the vanishing point. If we place another horizontal ellipse somewhere else in the scene, the major axis will be a horizontal line, meaning the minor axis remains vertical. This happens because the minor axis needs to be perpendicular to the plane of the ellipse. Since the plane of the ellipse here is horizontal, the minor axis must be vertical. Because the minor axis is perpendicular to the plane of the ellipse, it will cross the even mathematical center of the ellipse and go through the center of the ellipse in perspective. Even though photography and some perspective construction techniques will sometimes distort this, if we rotate a horizontal ellipse at all, it will not feel right to our eyes. So all horizontal ellipses must be drawn flat and parallel to the horizon. All of the principles we learned for a horizontal ellipse must still be true for an ellipse standing up. However, because the plane of the ellipse will be angled to our view, we have to account for the ellipse being slightly tipped in space. This means the major and minor axis will no longer be horizontal and vertical, but tilted. The angle of this tilt is dependent on the perspective the ellipse is in. If we find the center in perspective, we see that the minor axis goes directly through that point, satisfying one of the most important rules of ellipses. If we check our ellipse against the list of rules we've already learned, we can see that the major and minor axis go through the widest points of the ellipse and are tipped because it's standing up, they are right angles to each other, they divide the ellipse into four equal quadrants, the major axis is offset from the center line, and the minor axis also goes through the perspective center of the ellipse, meaning it is perpendicular to the plane of the ellipse. This means we have a true and correct ellipse.
The minor axis is arguably the most important part of the ellipse when drawing in perspective, and crucial to creating cylinders. If we extend it to the horizon, it will reveal the vanishing point on the opposite side. We can simply build a box based on our new vanishing point. An ellipse placed on the back plane is the back of our cylinder. We can connect the ellipse together with lines on the top and bottom, and remove the box we use for construction. For the cylinder to be correct, the minor axis needs to be the same for both ellipses, and pass through the center points of both sides of the box. If these were literally wheels on a car, the minor axis would be the axle that connects them together. In this example, the back ellipse looks strangely small because the original box was heavily foreshortened with the vanishing points close to the object. This increases the convergence in perspective and makes the back ellipse look much smaller. Let's draw another example but make it smaller on the page so the vanishing points are farther from the object. We can see that the cylinder looks much more normal. It's always important to keep in mind the distance of the vanishing points on our perspective scenes if we want it to look natural to our eye. I know ellipses can be challenging, so let's review the rules that will make your ellipses look correct. The major and minor axes go through the widest points of the ellipse. The major and minor axes are perpendicular to each other. The major and minor axes create four equal quadrants. The major axis will be different than the center of the circle in perspective. The minor axis also goes through the center of the ellipse in perspective. The minor axis is the axle of a cylinder and aims at the vanishing point, and this makes the minor axis perpendicular to the plane of the ellipse. This list will keep your ellipses looking correct, but we still need a reliable method to construct ellipses, and that will be the topic of our next video. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to go to drosh.com for more information on these topics and many more. If you want to see more videos like this, like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you for the next one.